What's up everyone? Thanks for uh, tuning in today. My name is David. If you haven't visited my channel before, uh, go ahead and take the time to subscribe. Select your notifications to all so you don't miss any videos in the future. And if you like my content and you want to see more of it in the future, please make sure that you uh, help out the algorithms by hitting that like button. I appreciate it. Thanks guys. Uh, so today I just got a notification uh, that somebody that has inspired me on YouTube replied to my comment. <laughs> really cool. I rarely ever get that. So uh, I appreciate it, even though it wasn't the the comment I was thinking you were going to reply back to. Um, nonetheless, you still made a comment back. So that gets the conversation started. <clears throat> um, I had made a comment on one of Invisible People's um, videos. Uh, he made a comment about, you know, how Mike Bloomberg had spent you know, a billion dollars in ad revenue. Well, I also made a video about that. So if you haven't seen it, go back and, and look for it. Uh, it's also a video uh, I talk about how I became homeless at 17 for the first time. Um, yeah, so he basically said like, not all people want to, not all people that are homeless want to be uh, homeless or no one wants to be homeless. And while I respect you, and I understand you've met your fair share of homeless people uh, throughout your journey. I have met a lot of homeless people in my journey as well. I've lived with them in these camps. Um, and maybe I shouldn't say I lived with them in the camps. I actually had my own camp away from their camps. Um, a lot of the homeless camps that I've seen or come across uh, don't exactly live the way I prefer to live my life. And by that I mean... Uh, a lot of the camps that I would come across in California, Riverside to be specific, and the Santa Ana Riverbed, uh, if you're familiar with it, there were a lot of camps that had a lot of trash buildup. Um, these people would not remove their trash, and a lot of times that's why the uh, local authorities would come in and remove them from their camps and destroy their camps. Uh, which, you know, in turn, actually, I didn't think that that was doing a really great service uh, to the people that were homeless or a service to the city of Riverside that now has this trash just piling up in the riverbed, uh, which in turn in the summer months ends up starting fires. Uh, look up how many fires have been started at the Santa Ana Riverbed by the Van Buren Bridge, okay, Van Buren Boulevard. Uh, it's right off of Clay, uh, which there's an in and out right there. There's a um, uh, animal shelter, and that bridge right there in that stretch of the riverbed has burnt down more times than I can remember in my lifetime of living in Riverside. Uh, there was a period of time where it burnt down every year. Like you could literally count on it. And it was because of homeless camps. These people didn't take precaution when they were starting fires. Um, and I tried to educate them. I would, I would show them my camp. I would say, look, I'm not going to force you to live this way, but here's an alternative so that we're not destroying the environment, number one, and creating an unhealthy living situation for you or others that are around you. Uh, when you're homeless, it's very important to up uphold your health, you know, uh, especially nowadays when we got things floating around like the coronavirus, okay? It's everywhere in 110 countries. Might not seem like a lot right now, 3,900 um, deaths so far um, and probably rising, but there are experts that say that this is going to be worse than the influenza outbreak that happened a long time ago, all right? Um, and while that doesn't scare me uh, because the actual demographic that it's affecting is mostly the elderly, um, it, it still doesn't mean that I can't be a carrier, we can come into contact with people. It's an airborne virus, and we can spread that. Now, how can we prevent that? Well, <laughs> it's going to be really hard because it's invisible, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you, you really got to clean up your camps. Um, you know, understand that, you know, you don't have much, but at the same time, what you do have, you should be taken care of. You know, don't leave your canned goods that you open, just toss them to the side. Don't leave your, you know, cans of soda or beer cans just lying around your camp or down the trail that leads to your camp or on the main trail where hikers go or uh, cyclists ride their bikes. Um, you know, don't leave 
dirty toilet rolls all over the place. You know, me personally, when I would use the, the bathroom in the wild, I would dig a hole and that's where I would go to the bathroom. And when I was done, I would bury it. And I wouldn't do it inside my camp. I'd go outside of my camp. Um, you know, so there, there are ways to still be a cleanly person while being homeless. You know, if you, if you, I actually had, um, Riverside fire department, um, and Riverside SWAT team come to my, my camp and I was all by myself and they were just in amazement when they walked underneath my trees and they finally came underneath and they were inside of my canopy of trees and they saw my setup. They're like, wow, I like what you've done with the place, but it's because I took the time to procure my area. You know, I didn't have fallen leaves all over the area and uh, my fire pit, I actually had a real fire pit ring with rocks around it. I, I dug a, a, a foot and a half, almost two foot hole. So that way I was burning in the ground, not above ground. And, and all the thing that does is prevent uh, or reduce um, the amount of embers that would fly in the air. And I'd also always have my grate, uh, my, my, my barbecue grate over that, those rocks in the, in the hole. <clears throat> I mean, I have plenty of friends that have been to my camp that, that can, you know, testify for me, you know, so hopefully you guys are watching this video and you'll leave a comment below letting them know what my camp looked like. I wish I still had pictures of my camp, uh, many phones ago <laughs> that were broken or lost or damaged, stolen, you know, whatever. I've just, I've lost those pictures. It was before I had like Google backup, um, things like that. But yeah, uh, very important to keep a cleanly camp, uh, because you can spread diseases when you have trash lying all around or you're defecating all over the place and you're not burying it. Um, it becomes a, a problem for everyone else too, not just yourself. Uh, but back to the subject that we were talking about before I get too far off the beaten path, uh, the conversation that is started now between me and the invisible people, uh, you know, I have met people out there that literally you know, I would ask them, you know, how, what brought you out here? I, just like you interview people. I just wasn't doing it on camera. I was just going out there talking to people. I was doing an outreach with my local church, uh, Pedley Christian Center. And, you know, I would invite them to come have a meal with us, um, you know, come to our worship and, you know, be a part of our Bible studies. Uh, cause my pastor, Tim, he used to say, you know, when we meet, we eat. <laughs> I used to love it, you know, because uh, after church, we'd always have this big area set up uh, with all this food that uh, my pastor would provide uh, from other, you know, pantries and stuff that would donate to their church. So it was really cool that, you know, everybody that came got to get a free meal. And a lot of times we did breakfast and lunch. So it was like two meals sometimes. And it was really cool. I like to see more churches do that uh, for some of the homeless people. Um, out where I'm at right now, um, I, I haven't seen too much of that, but I have, I was invited to like a men's breakfast, uh, part of the dad's organization. Uh, so a bunch of dads, uh, that are part of different churches get together on a Saturday. I think it's like one or two Saturdays a week. Uh, maybe the next one I go to, I'll, I'll film some, some there so you guys can see what that's about, but it was really cool. Uh, some pastors spoke, um, and it was basically a leadership meeting you know, uh, speaking to the men in these different churches on how they can be better leaders and better fathers. Um, but yeah, again, I'm getting off the beaten subject back to the invisible people and his comment about saying no one wants to be homeless. It's not true. I'm sorry. There are lots of people that don't care if they're homeless or not. I was one of them for the longest time, you know, um, It was probably about 2011-ish when I was camping out in the wild in that river. And the reason why I ended up out there, because I was just, I was tired of people at the time, you know, too many fake people that I was surrounded by. And I wanted to get away from it and I had nowhere to go. I didn't have my own place. Um, and at the time I didn't even have a tent. All I had was my backpack, a few pair of clothes, um, and a blanket that my friend had loaned me, uh, which I actually still have to this day. My friend and I, and I got to, you know, I got to see him before he passed away, accept Jesus Christ into his life. And it was really amazing. But Fernando, I still have your blanket. I carry it with me everywhere. 
but it kept me warm, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> but you couldn't, you couldn't pull me out of there if you wanted to. I was happy. I was actually happy where I was at. And, um, eventually, you know, what it took was, uh, my mom actually got released from prison after serving 30 years, uh, for a crime she didn't commit. Uh, it was actually my father. They, she was just considered an accomplice, and so she got uh, 16 to life, and served 30 years on that 16 year to life case. Um, when she was released, it was a complete surprise to me. Yeah, you know, I had not talked to her in, geez, man, like 18 years or something. And when I found out she was getting out, my sister let me know, and she said, "You need to come see mom." So I went and saw her, and. I don't know, we just, we clicked right off the bat and it was like we never missed in, in a beat. You know, that 18 years was non-existent. And so we started to form a relationship again. And, uh, you know, uh, a couple, I think it was about a couple months after we first reunited, um, she was actually staying in Pomona, California, and um, which is part of LA County. And she was staying with this lady, paying her rent, uh, and this was after she got out of the halfway house that she was in. Um, she was working. She was working for McDonald's. There was a, a really nice lady that owned a, a chain of McDonald's in that area that also uh, ran some sh some halfway homes for women. And so that she would put all these women to work at her McDonald's. Anyways, long story short, uh, she ended up taking housing with a, a lady that she met and befriended her. Um, she was going through her own struggles. Well, it turns out that lady wasn't paying her mortgage. And... One day out of the blue, she told my mom that, you know, they had 30 days to leave that home, that there was going to be a quick sell. So it took her by surprise, and I was still currently homeless at the time. I had been out there for about 18 months at the time. It was right around the end of my, my tour of the, the river, and uh, she didn't know what to do. And I said, Mom, let me uh, pray on it. And I'll let you know what we can do about this tomorrow morning or in the afternoon. I'll call you tomorrow. So she said, okay. Um, I prayed on it. And I felt uh, God put it on my heart uh, to go out there and help her. So I uh, packed up a few things. I left my camp intact because uh, I didn't know what was going to be the future. I just put my faith into God and went to Pomona. I got on a bus and went out there. And so uh, within about two weeks... I found, us, I found a job for myself, and I found us an apartment. And my mom's brother that lives in Alaska co-signed for the apartment. And me and my mom, you know, basically went in halves on the rent. And we took care of each other for a couple of years. It was amazing. You know, but that's what it took for me to care again, to come out into quote-unquote civilization. Before that, though, I just... I could have lived the rest of my life in that river. I didn't have any more kids like I do now. Uh, I didn't have a wife. I was divorced. Uh, my first child was with his mom. And so I just was just me. Um, but, you know, there was a point where, you know, I started praying for a family again. Uh, and here I am. God blessed me. Okay. Uh, but again, fighting homelessness. So... So it seems to be a never-ending battle in my life, and it's um, not that it's an old story or anything, uh, but it is kind of to me. You know, I just know how to deal with it, and I, I just keep pushing forward and trying to get out of it. You know, currently right now, um, I'm kind of in between jobs. Um, I did secure another job. Uh, in my past video, I talked about this. If you want to know more about that update, you can watch my previous video. Or I'll put a link down below. You guys can check it out. Um, but yeah, there are people out there that want to be homeless as tough as that may, uh, sound to you, invisible people. It, it, it is so because I've met them and, uh, I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm not trying to start a big, huge, long drawn out debate. I'm glad we can have this conversation openly though. Um, Hopefully, you know, we can feed off of it a little bit and, and, and end up coming together on things, you know, and working together because I have the same mission you do, which is to help homeless people, unhoused people, to get long-term help, not just short-term. And you're privately funded. I'm trying to be privately funded 
it's the best way to go. I hope we can both at least agree on that. Um, I do have a couple of church organizations that, you know, stepped out after I made a, a video about turning hotels into affordable housing communities. They love the idea and wanted to uh, come together with about 20 churches and do a nonprofit thing. But, you know, as I explained to the pastor, I said, you know, I, I love that you guys are willing to step out like that on my idea. Um, and it, it actually, they had been thinking about it too. So it was also their idea, but then she saw my video and we had already met and, and I think she just was like, this is a good idea and we need to do it. Um, so, but it, it has to be privately funded and for the purpose of solely just being able to, you know, act as you please, not falling under all these laws, regulations, guidelines that the government and state will give you. Really, the government and the state only want to give you temporary housing, temporary help, and assistance. And to me, that is a broken system. I don't know how you expect somebody in two, four, two to four days or a week, um, even a month, to rebuild their lives and turn things around completely 360 degrees. It just is next to impossible. I've tried it. And though there was a couple times where I was able to do it, um, the journey up until that point was a long one. You know, so we have to find uh, a better alternative than government and state funding uh, for long term help for people. And I hope that with everyone's help that watches these videos, everyone that subscribes, everyone that likes the videos, shares them, um, that there will be more people like you and like me that they want to see that done. And again, we're not going to be begging for money. I'm not going to be begging for money. All you have to do to help is to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it, and really, I mean, if you just subscribe and like it or view it, watch it, that's enough. Because eventually, if I get 100,000 people watching my videos per month, I can create enough finances through AdSense to be able to uh, do these things. And really, I mean, let's talk realistically about how many views I would need to be able to do something like buy a hotel at 1.6 or $1.3 million. Um, <laughs> I would have to be in the neighborhood of roughly five to 10 million views per month. And that's difficult with a channel like this. Um, I think I was doing some math on the Invisible People's channel because I think he's got roughly 346,000, 350,000, somewhere around that threshold of subscribers. And his videos produce 20, 30, some of them more, 1,000 views uh, per video. I mean, you do the math. You add that up, okay? Uh, if you're doing, even let's just say, like I always say, three videos a week, and say they, let's throw out a magical number, 50,000 views, that's 150,000 views a week. That's 600,000 views in two weeks. And that's a million point two views in one month. And if you can do that consistently, that would make you some decent finances uh, and maybe at least attract other private investors uh, to want to be a part of it. And the whole goal is not to make money off this thing. Um, are, are you going to make some money? Yes, but you're also going to invest it back into the community. It's not like I'm trying to get rich personally off of this idea. I want to help people with this idea. I have other ideas that can get me rich. That those those ones I expect to get rich off of those things that you know, or at least financially stable enough to where I'm not homeless anymore. You know that I can do YouTube full time, whether it's this channel or my Overlanding channel or uh, my Nissan Frontier channel or it's my podcast channel. The list goes on. I've got a lot of them. Okay, and, and I haven't really been able to have the time to produce content for all of them because I have to work a day job in order to pay my bills right now because I'm not getting ads, AdSense revenues. I can't even monetize yet because I don't have even a thousand subscribers yet. Okay, that, that's half the battle too is uh, being able to get enough subscribers to be able to monetize. If, if I don't have a thousand subscribers, I can't monetize. I can't make money off of ads. So, and I don't expect that to happen overnight, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, that we'll be able to hit it within at least six months time, okay? If I continue the path I'm going now, just consistently making videos, I think I can get there. I don't think I know. I just got to have people on the same page. 
And you got to go back and watch some of my previous videos about like how to create a community on YouTube. This is huge, guys. Even if the statistics were true and there were only 550,000 homeless people in the United States, which a lot of us know that's not a true number, okay? Um, there's probably that many alone in LA County, San Diego combined, maybe more. Then you have places like Chicago, and I've seen invisible people go to Florida, and uh, there's a lot in Texas, so there's, they're all over the place. But if we can get that community of homeless people to all unite and subscribe to each other's channels, uh, watch each other's videos, and, and while I understand it's impossible to watch 500,000 videos every single day, um, you, you pick and choose the ones you like. We subscribe to everybody, but we pick and choose the ones we like to, to watch consistently, you know, and eventually it's going to spread like wildfire. And all of us will have views. All of us will have AdSense revenue. That's what I want to see. You know, uh, some of my first AdSense dollars when I finally am able to monetize and give back to the community of the homeless people is I want to give them a way, if they don't already have it like I do, um, give them a phone or a camera so they can start recording and start making content. Whatever you want to do, make content. Just make sure that it's content that's going to be able to be family oriented that's a big thing for adsense uh, is it has to be family oriented if it's not some kind of family friendly oriented where it's you know no cursing and you know it's clean material they're not going to promote you they're not going to give you adsense revenue it has to be good content so you just got to figure out what you want to do but also you know use things like the Google adsense website uh, they have a calculator on there and you can actually choose you know, the type of um, community you want to make videos for. You can choose, you know, what area you're doing them in, whether it's North America, South America, uh, Europe, or wherever. Uh, and, and it'll calculate per view, per, it's as little as 10,000 views per month and as high as 10 million views per month. They have a calculation tool that will basically say, okay, if you have, you know, 100,000 subscribers like we're talking about, uh, or I'm sorry, not even subscribers, because it really doesn't matter about subscribers except for that minimum of a thousand to monetize. You can have a thousand subscribers and get a hundred thousand views per month and make money. You can have a million subscribers per month, get a hundred thousand views per month and make the same money as that channel with a thousand subscribers. And the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter about subscribers. How quickly your video gets traction matters about subscribers. But your views, there's so many different ways to promote your stuff. Um, and some other, I'm gonna show you some other ways in the future to grassroots campaigns. I don't know if you guys know what grassroots campaigns are, but uh, before there was online marketing, there was people to people marketing, okay? Start talking to people. If you have a channel, let people know that you have a channel. And even then, it's still difficult. I talk to people all the time about my channel and I still only have 10 subscribers. Actually, you know what, I lost a subscriber. I don't even know why I lost him. But I lost them. That, and that's how volatile YouTube is too. So that's why you have to continually promote, whether it's online, in person, signs, whatever, you have to promote it. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. Guys, this video is, video is running in 23 minutes already. I haven't done any editing. I haven't rolled the credits. Nothing. So, uh, you know, my retention is only something like four or five minutes, so I'll be really surprised if anyone's this far in the video. If you are, leave me a comment below so I know who you are, so I can give you a shout out. I love you guys. Take care. I'll catch up with you next time. Invisible people! Hey, I'm watching your videos, man. Watch my videos, okay? We get this thing started together. Every homeless person you talk to, you need to let them know. Start a YouTube channel. Connect with this community, the community you've already created. You've got 340-something thousand subscribers, almost 350,000 subscribers. Let's do something with that, okay? Uh, aside from just creating awareness, if we really want long-term help for these people, we have to create self-sustainability for them and show them how. You already know how. You've done it. You've got the proof in the pudding, buddy. I love it. Keep it up. You're doing great work. Okay? <laughs> Catch you guys next time. If you haven't already, click subscribe, hit the like button, comment below. If you didn't like this video, let me know why below. Okay? So that way I can make better content for you guys. If you don't say nothing, I don't know. I think I'm doing great. <laughs>
right? So, uh, and then share the video, all right? Catch you guys next time. Peace and love.